So, quite recently, uh, <laughs> a few of you uh, ha have noticed that one of the pieces that appeared on my cursed paleo art uh, actually has a rather notorious um, artist behind it. And you are not wrong. David Peters is a paleo artist. And if he had just stayed a paleo artist, this video wouldn't really be necessary. But he has, in more recent times, become rather infamous uh, among the paleontological community for being wrong about everything. <laughs> because despite having absolutely no actual paleontological training, no qualifications, no degrees, no field experience, nothing that would suggest that he is capable or accredited when it comes to analyzing prehistoric remains and coming up with theories, uh, he has decided, no, the paleontological community is hiding the truth about these animals, and I, David Peters, know better than all these filthy scientists. What do they know? And indeed, much of his more recent paleo artwork involves his particular interpretations of a variety of different prehistoric life forms, and basically all of them are completely wrong because, to be brutally honest, David just makes stuff up. That's what he does. That's his whole thing. David Peters is not a paleontologist, never has been. But he keeps going, and he's actually really toxic about it. He's notorious for getting into arguments and debates with people, both online and in real life, defending his viewpoints when he couldn't be further from the truth in many cases. And it didn't have to be this way. In the early days, in the 90s, and even in the very early 2000s, David was actually a pretty respectable figure. Uh, paleontologists knew him, and he was a regular illustrator in many different paleontological-based books. And his artwork was good. He is a genuinely talented artist. That I won't take away from him. He's very good at what he used to do. But in 2003, everything for him kind of went off the rails and he seemed to just lose his mind. For some reason, he decided not only was he more qualified to talk about prehistoric life than actual experts who had studied this stuff for years, but also that he knew how things should be going together, and it was all being kept from the general public for reasons that aren't clear. He made a presentation to the Society of Vertebrate Paleontology, where he would make the astonishing claim that the pterosaur, Jeholopterus, was in fact hematophagic. Uh, and if you don't know what that means, it means that it sucked blood. That's what he was suggesting. Based on what, you may ask? Absolutely not a dang thing. Not, uh, none of it. None of it was based on any kind of fact. And of course, the paleontological community at large called him out for it, and he proceeds to get into multiple arguments defending his viewpoints, which never, at any time, had any legitimate evidence behind them. Over time, he would start two different websites associated with his ridiculous nonsense. The first one was in 2011, a WordPress blog known as the Pterosaur Heresies, which is actually pretty on the nose if we're talking about his particular interpretation of pterosaurs, because he was pretty obsessed with pterosaurs for a while, but he would move on to other forms of life and eventually found another website called reptileevolution.com. Both sites are pretty hideous uh, in the modern day and full of crazy nonsense. It would be impossible, well not impossible, but unreasonable to expect me to go over every single falsehood he has put forward because the thing about Peter is that he's fast, blindingly fast, when it comes to putting forth his ridiculous theories. Instead of examining fossils in person like any logical paleontologist, he uses Photoshop on top of the images of fossils. The reason he does this is not only because he's frankly lazy, but also he contends that by using image manipulation in a process that he calls digital graphic segregation, which means nothing uh, to anyone but him, he himself can see more meaningful details in the fossils that paleontologists do not. Never mind the fact that paleontology has become quite computerized and there are many, many digital techniques that can show a lot of details in fossils the naked eye can't. 
uh, Photoshop is a great tool, uh, but not, not in the way he's using it. An actual paleontologist would use something like a CT scanner, or a UV light, or anything else. I mean, yeah, I'm sure Photoshop, you can use it to, to make a great piece of paleo art about a reconstruction, but not, not like this, um, at all. And because of his speed and prevalence, the fact that he keeps throwing things out there, just willy-nilly, means that he spreads misinformation like a plague, and it drives actual educated people in the field bonkers, because they have to work extra hard to correct all the nonsense he peddles. For a time, he insisted that pterosaurs walked on two legs, which, no, no they don't. But any effort to correct him, any effort to educate him, any effort to say, yo, you're wrong, has only caused him to become further ingrained in his way of thinking. As I said, he works ridiculously fast, publishing new articles pretty much daily, almost always showing off all these new features to these new fossils that scientists had missed, and that he had discovered a new place for it in the Tree of Life, or whatever that means. And no, no you didn't, you just looked at a fossil in Photoshop and said, yes, I, I am genius, I am very smart, I am so smart, the smartest man alive, and no, no, you're wrong. And sometimes he's wrong about the simplest of things, like names. He attempted to get a gotcha moment with the paleontologist by pointing out that a Cretaceous lizard known as Carusia can't be called Carusia because there's already a living lizard called Carusia. But this gotcha moment uh, is frankly ridiculous because there is not an already living lizard called Carusia. The already living lizard is called Core Rusia. Spelled differently and pronounced slightly differently. Are the names very close? Yeah, they are. Really, really close. But they are different, which means there isn't an issue. He also has a habit of thinking that Megoraptorin theropods are the same things as Microraptorine theropods. And no, no, they friggin' aren't. And just by throwing all these ridiculous things out, all these pictures, all these analyses, none of them are based off of anything other than his own ludicrous interpretation, which he only spends maybe a few days on, if that. Remember, most prehistoric remains are studied by paleontologists for years before solid conclusions are published, because it takes time and deep examination to make absolutely certain that their theories are likely correct. But that's, that's not... That's not how David Peters works. No, no, no. He, he can just look at this stuff. He's a magic man like that. His eyes are just superior. He can see all the stuff that you missed and, you know, show off at the ter pterosaurs with their giant head crests. That, that's definitely a thing that he decided had to be there, even though, no, 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 you're wrong. And the major problem is he's become so prevalent when it comes to what he's doing, so outrageous and so constant with delivering all this new information that is complete hogwash and worthless, that a lot of what he's done often finds itself next to actual legitimate paleontology on the internet. People have even started believing the kind of crap he pushes and entertaining that it must be true when in fact, no, 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 this man is not qualified to discuss any of this and any actual paleontologist can tell you that it's wrong. In fact, most casual connoisseurs of paleontology as a whole, like me, can tell you that it's wrong. I have just as much education in the field as Peters does because neither of us have actual pedigrees when it comes to paleontology, but even I know he's wrong. He generally likes to add ridiculous nonsense to any animal he reconstructs or draws. Giant fins or feathers or whatever. None of it having any basis in fact. If he were just drawing this as like a hobby, like as a fan drawing, like oh this is just a casual interpretation of what this could look like, that'd be one thing. But what he's doing is actually attacking legitimate paleontology and declaring it false and that his view is correct. And that sort of misinformation can do a lot of damage when it comes to people believing this kind of stuff, when it comes to people knowing about this kind of stuff and getting to the truth regarding the history of biology on our planet or the history of the planet in general. At the time, a lot of his interpretations are based off of the rocks that the fossils are found in. Not the fossils, the rocks! He doesn't even know the difference between a rock and a fossil! And don't even get me started on his classifications. Oh my god. 
he throws so many animals and different genuses or families or whatever it is, just whatever he feels like, and it's all wrong, and it's almost impossible to keep track of because he says it so often. I don't think even he knows how many reclassifications he's made, but just because he says something should be there uh, doesn't mean it's true at all. And his idiocy even extends to current animals. Yes, really. He thinks bats are related to primates. Okay. I mean, they're both mammals, but they're not... No, no, no the common ancestor is far and away back in time. Like, that's not... No. And to be honest, what I don't understand is why. Why are you doing this? Peter's... Man, you used to be a good artist. I mean, you still are a good artist. You, you don't have to be this way. Like, why are you going out of your way to try to discredit people that are leaps and bounds beyond you in terms of understanding what paleontology is about? Like, you could have actually gotten educated on the subject and actually contributed legitimately, but instead you've spent 20 years making stuff up for no reason other than to prove that you're really smart when all you're doing is proving that you're not. And I'm not even sure I can call you dumb, because I don't think you actually are. I think you have the capacity to be better than this. You're just choosing not to be. There's gotta be some mental disorder related to this if you ask my opinion. Maybe he has oppositional defiant disorder or ODD. But I'm not a mental health professional, so I mean, I don't know. I'm just saying there's gotta be something here, because. Like, this doesn't make any sense for a logical, rational person to do, is what I'm trying to say. It's a ridiculous fixation. And if you think you're helping paleontology, I assure you, you've done more damage than anyone else in recent history when it comes to this sort of thing. You've gone out of your way to get into the science, but choose not to actually understand it. Instead, disagree with it for no reason, and try to correct it on your own, on your own little blogs. As a result, creating confusion and frustrating Everyone, please stop. It's, it's time for you to stop. I am begging you. And with that, a special thank you to my Apex Predators, Arthur Roy and Metal for Life guy. Till next time, this is Darkness, and I bid you all a fun farewell.